So if you need a VPN, go Nord. Use nordvpn.com forward slash Kimba to get a huge discount off your Nord VPN plan plus four additional months for free. It's completely risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. The link is in the show notes. Protect your computer like a cricketer protects its nether region with NordVPN today. Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to episode 10 of the Crick Picks podcast, in which I, Behram Kazi, who you can find at Def Mango on Twitter, Estelle Vasudevan, who you can find at Estelle underscore Vasude, the number one, on Twitter, and of course, Jared Kimber, who you can find literally everywhere at a Jared Kimber. We're going to be picking uh, our favorite or top five test captains in this edition of the Crick Picks. And for those of you who don't know, we do a snake style draft. So first pick goes sixth and seventh, one, two, three, three, two, one. And that's how we oscillate. And yeah, I mean, test captains is just such an interesting topic that I'm really, you know, all ears over here. Also, I have last pick. So Estelle, you're number one. I'm really keen to see who you go with first. Yeah, I'm going with, I think, an obvious pick, Steve Waugh at number one. Hmm. Uh, just statistically, the most successful test captain, right, that we've seen. Yeah. Uh, He's not even on my list, by the way. <laughs> wow. That's good. I haven't taken 70 one away something there. percentage, right? 72 <laughs> yeah. win 70 percentage. Yeah, 70 plus win percentage. I think we could see who looked at win percentage and who went for Raverick <laughs> Mogues. Uh, uh, sorry, Maverick Rogues. Not Ma- I think I got that Raverick right. Raverick Mogues. Sorry. That's what yeah, you said. Yeah, Raverick <laughs> Mogues, which is also my stage name. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Steve Wall so had that Wall. run of 16 games, right? Yep. Yep. Yeah, yeah. That was pretty cool. 41 okay. wins in 57 games. That is quite impressive. Yep. He won a, but okay. So I think quite early on, we have different cultural uh, mm-hmm. looks at this, right? So it feels like Estelle is going to go very much with um, uh, wins mm-hmm. uh, over uh, everything else. Whereas, so I'm going to go in a very different uh, direction. I'm going to go Douglas Jardine mm-hmm. as my first mm-hmm. pick. So the man who basically, to stop Bodyline, ruined his own career. Uh, uh, well, sorry, to, to stop Bradman, came up with Bodyline and essentially ruined his own career. Spent hours and hours looking at footage of Bradman to try and work out what to do. Then wrote letters to people to try and get more information <laughs> about how to do it. Like, he is a tactical genius, absolutely, you know, light years ahead of anyone else. And as I said, kind of ruined his career in coming up with one great cricket tactic. Um, uh, but certainly, you know, and, and he captained England. I don't know if you guys know, he was also supposed to captain India. He ah. very nearly captained India as well because I think he was, I think he might have been born in India or he had a relationship with India somehow as well. So um, it would have been great if he'd managed to captain two different countries and uh, and, and annoy people even more. Um, but <laughs> yeah, just known as a tactical genius, and um, I think you can see kind of where my picks are going rather than uh, overall <laughs> wins. But Bayram, what have you got for yours? I'm interested over here actually because. Uh... A, I did not know about that fa- fun fact that he could have captained two countries, but also the fact that you did not have Steve Waugh on your list is a bit shocking to me because that's nine losses in, I don't know, a lot of games. And, he did, uh, but he wasn't a good captain. He had a good team. These are two very different things. Very, Fair enough. Steve Waugh, Steve Waugh captaining. Let's talk about Steve Waugh captaining. I'm going to put five slips in and eventually <laughs> someone's going to nick it. Is Steve Waugh's captain captaincy, <laughs> or that's not working? I'm going to throw the ball to to Shane Warne. I don't of that era. I don't think Steve War was the best captain. I think Michael Clark at the other end mm-hmm. and um, uh, Mark Taylor were both much better tactically than Steve War was. Um, so yeah, no, I'm, I I can understand why people would pick it, but I just I thought he was a kind of a boring captain by numbers kind of dude um it, but you know he's Steve War. I, I can understand that. I'm I'm not shitting on Estelle's pick. I'm just yeah. saying it's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I didn't have him in my top three, but he was there because you can't ignore the 72% win percentage, but I like how you... Yes, you can! Know, you've, <laughs> you've gone for the Raverick Moogs. And I, I the like Raverick Moogs. Yeah. Anyway, my first pick is also, I, I thought this guy would not last, you know, the round, but uh, Graham Smith. Uh, he yeah. is the captain who has led in most number of test matches in history, 109 games, I believe. And uh, he has 53 wins, so... Not quite a 50% win percentage. So, uh, but but what I think is important over here is that South Africa or that team, basically, it won away a lot. They yeah. drew in mm-hmm. India twice. They won in Pakistan. They beat Australia for the first time in, uh, I think it was late 2008. And that was a big thing back in the day. And then South Africa kind of won a lot of series 
in a row in Australia. And, uh, you know, a, a proper leader, Biff, uh, even if his hand is or wrist is fractured, he's going to go out there and bat. I think this made it to another one of the prick picks as mm -hmm. well. And, uh, yeah, I mean, he was young, thrust into the role, and uh, did quite well, I believe. Uh, definitely, uh, probably made all of your lists. And, uh, mm. yeah, I think it's the away victories bit that really stands out for me. Of course, he did lead South Africa to number one in the test rankings as, as well. But, you know, wins in South Africa, uh, sorry, Australia, New Zealand, the West Indies, Pakistan, and, and drew two series in India, that's, that's quite a resume. Yeah, I, I had him high. My, my big thing was he wasn't a particularly good captain when it came to things like um, how to handle spinners. Like, mm. he, you know, ta tactically at times he could be a little bit confusing, but he kind of built, like they were a really good side but never quite brought it together and he was the guy that kind of brought it together and I think he deserves a lot of credit for that. Like, compare him to Steve Smith, not to shit on Estelle again, but a little bit. Steve Waugh. Like, Steve Smith, <laughs> uh, sorry, Steve Waugh. Steve Waugh <laughs> inherited a great side, right? Mm. Whereas... If you look at um, Graham Smith, he actually inherits a kind of uh, a confused side. And uh, do you guys know the full story about how he becomes captain? Because it's fucking hilarious. He plotted, didn't he? There was something of the sort. So he was, he missed out on the 2003 World Cup side, right? Hmm. And, and so they played warm-up games beforehand. And he basically did a Jimmy Butler, uh, which is a big thing in the NBA, where Jimmy Butler got a bunch of scrubs and took on the, the all the stars on his own team to show that he was better. Graham Smith played for, I think it was... Western province, right? And they played the main South African team and beat them. And Graham Smith told everyone, we're going to beat them because uh, they're not very good. And we're going to prove that they picked the wrong squad. And that was a big part of what ended up with him being test captain. Like that's, and, and he's like no, no one at that stage, right? Like it wasn't like it's the Graham Smith that we know now. He was like really young and had just been left out of the World Cup squad and he did yeah. that. So I, I, nothing but respect for that. And I do think he changed the way they thought about cricket. But there were times when I was just like, I don't think he was a bad tactician, but I don't think he understood spin bowling. And that is a kind of a big part of being a captain as well. Yeah, fair enough. I mean, there's just the fact that he took on the role, I think, when he was 22. And and how many uh, careers of English captains has he ended, Jared? He, he, he <laughs> did, did destroy. I mean, he's a great... Yeah. I think Graham Smith's a fantastic story. Yeah. Also, probably a better bat than most people remember. Like, mm. he, he's, he's probably like top 30, top 40 all-time batters. And... That's not even really factored in anymore. I, you know, it's a yeah. really, really interesting career that he had. Um, and then I think he was in charge of the bubble that they had um, during COVID, which didn't work mm. as well. Yeah. Just, just fun facts. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, th th those victories in England in particular, I, I remember because English summers are something that we always watch and, and that was as dominant as, as one or, or victories can get. But anyway, second pick is not a numbers pick. It is a feels pick. It is an emotional feels. pick for me personally. I'm going with Ms. Baul Huck. Because uh, 56 games, 26 wins, 19 losses, they might not read, you know, uh, brilliantly. Uh, but what Mizbah did was more than that. He took on or he took charge of a team that had just gone through the spot fixing scandal. And Pakistan had lost uh, home test or home all cricket, not just test cricket. They didn't play any cricket at home for the longest time. But test cricket in particular, you know, it felt like this was the end because they'd lost their, you know, uh, new ball bowlers who were, you know, literally rocking world cricket and they'd lost their opener and Mizbah was out of all plans and mm. thereon he became captain out of nowhere and then not only did he, you know, help Pakistan earn its respect back on the world stage, he also led them to the test mace. I know the world test championship wasn't around back in the day and they were number one in the world for literally like a month or maybe even less than that. But, you know, that record in UAE was enviable. And he won a series in New Zealand. He drew a series of, against a very formidable England team in England. I in feel like you are justifying this quite a lot. I mean, the push-ups. <laughs> who can forget the push-ups? Can push you take us through every single match? That <laughs> he, uh, look, I, I, think, I think it's a fair... I, I, yeah. You've probably gone too high, right, mm. with him. But I think it's fair for him to be on this overall list because he did take a team that was falling apart and bring it back. Tactically, obviously, we all know he could be a little bit defensive at times yeah. and, and, and do some odd things. But I do think he, tactically as well, he was quite clever in many different ways um, and some of the stuff he did. You, you don't have to sell it, man. I mean... <laughs> I mean, that be... England series deserves to be sold. That was a big, big thing. It was a big deal. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's a totally... Uh, feels emotional sort of pick it's it's not on the numbers and yeah i'm happy with it all right um now that we've had that 28 minute story um 
Can I just say, I think I don't know if I would have taken her here, but I would certainly take her quite high. If Susie Bates had captain a single test match, I would have her on this list because I think she's the best women's captain by such a distance I've ever seen. Um, tactically, she's so far ahead. Uh, I remember watching her in 2012 World Cup and it was like, Everyone else was like just playing cricket and she was playing chess. It was absolutely brilliant. But I can't put her in because she hasn't played a single test match. Um, so uh, um, sadly, uh, she doesn't get in. There's actually quite a few New Zealand men as well that are quite interesting mm. here. But I am going to go with Arjuna Ranatunga. Ooh, hipster pick. Because I think that if you go back and have a look at that early Sri Lanka team, it really wasn't that good. And he made it better than it was and made them more successful. And if it wasn't for the way that he handled Murali as a bowler, but also as a political object, um, mm. he wouldn't have stuck around. There's the whole test match where he comes to England and, uh, and sends England in. And England make like 400 odd. And he's like, it doesn't matter. We'll only bat once in this test match. Um, you know, like he thought about cricket so differently to everyone else. So if you compare him to someone like Steve Waugh, like Steve Waugh was very, very down the line. This is what we're going to do. Whereas Arjuna was just like, it was all over the place, his theories um, and, and the way that he went about things. Um, uh, so yeah, I'm going to have him there's a couple of yeah no a general runner I'm, I'm sticking with that all right estelle double pick for you yeah so that was going to be my number two good and miss mm. bell was going to be my number three so thank you guys <laughs> wow for that brilliant uh, just on arjuna i think and both of them i felt like the the um the impact they had outside was so great Speaking about Arjuna, I think he he taught Sri Lanka to kind of n not mm. be backward when it came to playing teams like England, right? Um, I remember that oval test where Murali got 16 wickets. Uh, yeah. I think that was the last time England gave us a one-off test, right? Because it was kind of end of season. We just have to, we have to do this. We, we have to tick this box. We'll give them a test. And then Sri Lanka beat them. And since then we've been getting like the worst conditions and, you know, mm. tough to beat. Right. So that was, I think a lot to do with kind of Arjuna's attitude and the way, what he, what he made his team believe as well. So anyway, that was going to be my pick. So I'll. Also I Jared, it's good that I picked Nisbah, right? She, she was going to pick him ahead of me. Yeah, no, no, you're right. I still think you both got Misbah slightly too high, but he's on my list. <laughs> yeah. Okay, right. so Number I'll two. go with um, another Asian one. And this might be a bit left wing, but I'm going with Virat Kohli. Uh, oh, no, he was there. Please. I feel like I had he overall, like, kind of rev revolutionized the way they played in that, you know, mm -hmm. he gave so much, again, like Arjuna, he gave that aggressive intent to India where they didn't back down. Um, and you're seeing kind of the fruits of it now, right? Sure, they haven't won a World Test Championship. Um, and they've always had talented players, right? It's about going beyond that. And I felt like he gave that, especially when you think about the way he kind of was instrumental in building that fast bowling arsenal they have um, and kind of giving that confidence to those mm -hmm. bowlers. Um, so yeah, Virat Kohli for me at number two then. Um, and number three... Uh, Wait, you, you've done two in a row. Oh, no, you haven't. No, no. no she's just talked through just, about uh, yeah, been, captains. Yeah. <laughs> she, hasn't, she only picked one. And then she went with Virat Kohli in the top six captains of all time. And like, so we're just all going to get abused by Rohit fans for days now. For <laughs> Estelle's oh, <pick>. no. <laughs> <laughs> um, and my next one's going to be Michael Vaughan. Mm, good one. Again, I felt like, you know, at a time when England weren't doing so well, in the test arena, at least, he was able to kind of inject some life into that team. Um, and that Ashes win, obviously, is, is the highlight um, of his captaincy. I'm not a, not a big fan of Michael Vaughan post. <laughs> the human. The <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, captaincy-wise and analyst. test captaincy-wise, definitely uh, amongst the top top ones. You know, obviously, I'm friends with lots of the England um, former players. Sorry, sorry, Vaughny for that one. Um, <laughs> and they, the way they do talk to, about him is on a different level. Um, you know, the way he understood people and uh, tactics. And the 2005 tactics were probably as revolutionary as kind mm. of anything. Like, 
sweepers in test matches didn't really exist unless, you know, Sobers was already on 150, right? So to go early uh, with that, and it's quite a, it's quite a common thing now. Um, you know, different kind. Of, uh, I, I saw again a different kind of thinking. I don't know if he would have made my list, but I don't think it's. I think that's a much better pick than Barrett Coley. Um, <laughs> out of <laughs> um, out of those two. Um, uh, but but yeah, no, I think he's certainly well known as captain. Uh, I, I right. had both of those guys actually on my list because I think Virat. What Dhoni did was he made India a strong team, but they didn't win away. Virat got them to win away. And I think that was quite good. And the fitness and fast bowler and let's get 20 wickets thing. I like that about Kohli. And then... Um, Kohli had a slightly player? better team than Fair. than uh, than anyone else. Um, no, that's yeah. that's Estelle's picks. It's, it's, more, uh, it's up to me now, isn't it? Uh, uh, Michael Vaughan also, 2005 Ashes. That He he was there solely uh, in my list because of that. Like, no, no. I, and I do think that's a really important one. But I, I know that... He was a great captain outside of that. Certainly the way that his teammates and, and everyone talks about him. Yeah. Um, okay, so I've got one more pick here, don't I? So yes, I need... Do. Okay, I'm going to go Warwick Armstrong. Mm. So for those who don't know, Warwick Armstrong is basically the reason that Australians are assholes. Um, <laughs> I mean, he's not, but he's like the first, like, really rough Australian captain who, you know, and he was an absolute monster. Some of the stuff he did, like, I think it was, uh, Frank Woolley was, uh, playing. I think, I, I think I wrote the player, right. Frank Woolley was batting, um, in his first test match and Warwick Armstrong was bowling and Warwick Armstrong bowls on the pitch beside, um, the wicket for like 15 minutes straight. They had to change the laws of cricket because of War what Warwick Armstrong did. Warwick Armstrong also once convinced the umpires to let him bowl two overs from, uh, back to back. So he's the only person in test match cricket who bowled from both ends, um, in a row. Um, he just, but, but really sets the template for what a straight, you know, that sort of Ian Chappell, Alan Border. Um, you know, Richie Benno, Steve War, they all have shadows of that Warwick Armstrong thing. All the, you know, um, he was maybe slightly, but I think he was maybe a slightly more Richie Benno type of um, tactician, but he was a Steve War mental disintegrating type of person as well. And he kind of invents the, the fast bowling aspect of cricket um, because fast bowling was just sort of coming through and he picked two proper fast bowlers to torment England on a tour. So he was right back there at the start. Um, uh, also not, maybe not the cricket's greatest athlete. Um, mm -hmm. you know, if, if you know, worth having a look at a photo of him. Uh, I made a joke the other day about you, who was it? Was it Sinclair who did the handstand in the, for the West Indies? Yeah. Um, and, and I made a joke online that Warwick yeah. Armstrong used to do this. And this fan um, asked me, and I just sent him a picture of Warwick Armstrong to show him <laughs> how unlikely the handstand was. Um, but yeah, I, I I think he's important because up until really World War One, England was known as the nasty team. And oh. Warwick Armstrong really changes that narrative very, very quickly. And Australia, get that narrative and don't let it go until basically Pat Cummins. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. I'll have to actually read up on Warwick Armstrong a bit more. Um, I've got a double pick now, don't I? Yep. Ooh, this is tough. Um, yeah, there's some obvious picks over here. But I, I feel like going for a Ravrik Moog now. And I'm going to go Ben <laughs> Stokes. Because uh, Whoa, sure, okay. early days for Basball. But we've seen some, you know, outrageous things already. And mind you, he's only lost five games and has a pretty decent win percentage as well. We don't know how this story will end, but I love the funky feels. I love the way England go out and attack. I don't like the way they want to die on that hill and will defend themselves till eternity. But what I do like about Stokes is that he gives all of his players that liberty to go and express themselves and they enjoy their cricket. That's the main recurring theme that you hear from all of these English players, right? That Stuart Broad says it's the most enjoyable period of his career. And Stuart Broad has had a long career. And, you know, some of those dismissals that he manufactures Khwaja with the umbrella field, a fair few dismissals in the Pakistan series when in England were playing on those roads here in Pakistan. They won that three-match test series 3-0. Three and I believe a lot, a lot of that had to do with Stokes' uh, proactive captaincy. And uh, yeah, I mean, of course, there will be days where baseball fails. But in terms of, you know, revolutionizing the sport, he, he's brought a flavor to test cricket that is, you know, addictive. And whether England win or lose, you're going to be watching their test matches. And for that reason, I believe he, he makes it to my list. I thought you were going yeah. to pick him, Jared. <laughs> it's, I just think it's maybe a little bit too early and I don't know mm -hmm. how 
much long. Like, I, I mean, I don't think he's far away from from this list or anything. Um, and I, I think it's a good pick. It's just a bit early, and I probably just need a little bit longer to make a uh, completely solid one. But he's on my long list. Yeah. Yeah, I, would have, I thought that was a pretty good pick because I think in your, I, I know we like to laugh about it and make, like people make jokes about baseball, right? And obviously they, yeah. they are not too keen about the terminology. But um, I think in years to come, we're going to be talking about this era and going to be talking about McCullum and mm -hmm. Stokes, right? And how they kind of, I think people take it a little too literally when you say attacking cricket. It's not just about throwing your hands. And they've shown that in in a lot of the games they've played in the last year or so. So, yeah, I yeah. really like that pick. Yeah, it's it's quite smart how, you know, they reverse swept a lot in that first test versus India. There are a lot of elements to, to baseball. And, uh, yeah, my, my next pick is maybe someone a bit more conventional. Um, Kane Williamson, I'm going with him. 40 games, 22 wins, 10 losses show that is you know, a standard sort of record. But he won a test championship with New Zealand and post Big Three era to have accomplished that, I feel, is a big deal. Also, I think he's a very calm and cool customer, doesn't get overawed and uh, everyone really backs him and, and he has a very well-gelled unit. So in terms of rallying his troops and everything, he seems like a very collected individual. And uh, I just feel like Kane's energy kind of resonates throughout that team. And New Zealand are an extremely professional unit who will, uh, everyone overuses this uh, statement, but it's true that they always punch above their weight. And I feel like Kane has kind of challenged that and said that, hey, we, we, we're we heavier. Our weight is more, you know. And uh, yeah, I, I think it was a phenomenal achievement to win that test championship uh, and, and defeat India in the final. And, and they were quite spotless in that run as well. I don't have him in the top five of New mm -hmm. Zealand captains. But... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of very interesting New Zealand captains, but you forgot to steady the ship. I mean, there's a hat based on him as a captain, right? Like that, there, there's a, there's a cult around it. I, I just think that I, I think he's a fine captain, but New Zealand have just had so many brilliant tacticians and, and ca captains who've made great sides out of literally bits and pieces they found around, around their couch. Right. Um, and I think with Williamson, it's like, okay, well you have Bolt, Southey, Javison, Wagner, Ross Taylor, like it, BJ Watling, like it's a little bit, I, I just feel like he had a better team than a lot of other New Zealand mm -hmm. captains. Not that he was any better a captain, um, but look, it, I, don't, I think the, the internet will be happy and sometimes mm -hmm. that's what it's really about. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to go with Flemo, aren't you? It's me, is it? I got another mm -hmm. one. Uh, yeah. Uh, where am I up to? It's... I am going to go. So I've got one more pick after this. So what will you two pick off my list? I don't actually, I think I might be okay. I think you, you two might be fine. So I am going to go MS Dhoni. Hmm. I think MS Dhoni early test captaincy career was very fresh way of thinking about captaincy. I, I know I get what you were saying before about the Virat Kohli having more success, but Virat Kohli just had a better team. And I and I, I want to kind of divorce that from the decisions I saw uh, a, a player make on the field. And whether it be T20 cricket, ODI cricket or test cricket, I don't know if I've ever been as consistently impressed with any captain's um, tactical decisions. There are some times when I thought Dhoni did things he was too pragmatic and that obvious, you know, if, if you look at Jardine and, and Arjuna that I have on my list, they're like maybe a little bit more dynamic and a little bit more fun. Um, but uh, I think MS Dhoni has to be, um, I think he, I mean, it's, it's an absolute disgrace that he's below Virat Kohli on this list, but we have to blame <laughs> Estelle for that one. Um, but um, I think he, I thought he was a fantastic test captain. I think the biggest issue with him is the site so got a little bit stale and I don't think it was his fault. I think he tried to do, everything he could to make it work um and it and it just wasn't that whereas that you know Rohit and, and Virat just have much better sides to be able to lead than than MS Dhoni did but if you're talking about actually making decisions on the field and that's where I look at captaincy I think MS Dhoni was certainly um, a level above the other guys there mm. fair enough Estelle okay Final two so picks I have you. yeah two picks right uh, so I'm going, with, since I didn't get Arjuna, I'll go with another Sri Lankan, Mahela Jayawardhana, who mm. I think is widely accepted as the, tactically the best 
captain sri lanka have had um he's his record is also pretty good i think it's the same as sanat jayasurya but also he was that next level right after arjuna and sanat kind of built sri lanka cricket the next level of making them successful in particular the performances in england uh, in 2006 i think that was the series um, for him just all around he was a good captain i think the way he managed people the way he managed roles and also he brought a bit of that aggression um to the sri lankan side which may have been a bit lacking with with jayasurya in in terms of obviously sanat jayasurya is a attacking bat right but he's not an overtly aggressive or you know a, a in your face kind of person uh, but mahela was able to bring that a bit more in the guise of you know the west sees him as a gentleman and you know he speaks well and he's eloquent and you know all of that but a little more aggressive so he would be my number 4 pick that that i think that's very really solid i don't know if i would yeah. uh, have him above ajuna as a tactician um but uh but i think i i always thought he was a really good clever captain uh, mahela i have, i have no issue with that i think people who didn't follow sri lankan cricket automatically have kumar ahead of him and it's like kumar wasn't as good a captain as mahela was that's just no, not no. a thing that happened absolutely not i had him on my list but he was like down the pecking order there are a few guys ahead i have over him okay so for my last one okay i'm going to get i'm going to get shit for this as well i'm yes, going you with... are. i don't even know what it is <laughs> <laughs> okay so i'm going with hansi kranje oh my Ooh. god <laughs> wow He's interesting gone. pick <laughs> Jared was and this one is completely i think the last think... episode of crick picks everyone <laughs> <laughs> because that, all that I mean... goodwill that i had built up with the cane pick oh <laughs> is gone <laughs> he's going to feature in one of our next episodes as well i'm sure but uh, mm. i'm just i think mm. this is really like subjective because growing up for whatever reason south africa was the team we followed at home um after sri lanka So obviously Hansi Kranje was the, at the forefront of that right um so i and like one of the core memories i have is him destroying morally i mean that's obviously as a batter but um as a captain as well i felt like since their readmission he took over um and it was almost like you know you're establishing yourself in international cricket right and they were quite successful during that period despite coming from basically nowhere so um yeah my number 5 so i I'll, i'll tell you a story about this i wrote a big i was at uh graham smith's last test match and i wrote a big piece about graham smith because i as you might notice from before i'm quite fascinated by him and his life and, and the way he became captain and you know and everything and it i wrote about the fact that there are a huge percentage of south africans who still thought hansi cronier was a better captain than graham smith and it comes down to two things one is he was a more overtly strategic captain than graham smith so graham smith did good strategies but it was a bit more like in a subtle way whereas hansi made everyone know every time he was doing a weird strategy like in you know all that sort of stuff i think it was you know he looked like cuz this is the thing with captaincy people really like it when people are, when captains are moving the field around a lot more but it's like well that's not actually good captaincy that just means you're moving the field around a lot more so i think hansi had that but the other thing that hansi had was and he's a very important person from this because he was an afrikaans cricketer who who led the team and they had always been led by english um um south africans up until that point so he has a real place and that's why they made that remember that i think his brother made a movie about him and um mm. you know all this there's a, there's a whole so there is a whole thing out there i don't think hansi cronje was a bad captain um he did a couple of really rogue things actually to get back to our um reverick mogs he <laughs> he had the earpiece in his yep. ear listening to his coach the and the other thing he used to do is he used to get fielders to go backwards right so you're not allowed to do that it's actually against the laws of cricket so it is a che- it's a cheating um thing but he used to do that um and so he had these like little random things that he did however i just feel that estelle is getting us all abused for no reason and i don't know i don't know why she would want us to do that so what was we all we uh, i does, think it's because uh, i had such a good run up. with the mustaches and the the facial hair so i had to screw something up here <laughs> oh dear um okay it's me now isn't it baram yeah yes. Oh, this is tricky because I haven't picked. Pick, 
Yeah, I haven't picked a single New Zealand captain, and I feel like they all kind of eat each other. Um, and I, I really want to know what your pick is, because if we don't <laughs> pick this other player, I think we've made a, a huge error. But I'm not sure. No, okay, I'm going to go with him. Uh, Clive Lloyd. I, I had Clive Lloyd. Um, I was going to pick him. You could have gone with the other guy. <laughs> okay. Um, if, another day, can we do our top five New Zealand captains? Because I've got a lot. Because I think I've got like six of them on my list. Like it's ridiculous yeah. here. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, so Clive Lloyd, you know, to go back to the baseball Michael Vaughan thing, um, uh, you know, Arjuna Ranatunga is probably another one like that. We're talking about, and Mizba. we're talking about mm. people who not only were good captains, but actually changed the direction um, of their team. And, you know, could, you know, it, it's easy to look back now and go, oh, of course they'll be, all, you know, all their fast bowlers, but they weren't, right? Mm -hmm. And the courage that he needed to do that in a, in a time where, you know, there was racism against the West Indies, you go back and have a look at some of the coverage um, that they received. Like a lot of the English magazines, it is just coded racism against the thugs of the West Indies bowling short. And it's like, now everyone bowls short, right? Like he changed the game. They changed the length that people bowled. Tactically, his ability to get uh, you know the best out of Viv Richards and Gorner Greenwich and those sorts of attacking players, but also if you look at their batting, it wasn't quite as deep as we remember. There was a lot of like struggling guys that you know he he kept in the side, sort of you know all the way up to the uh, you know the thinking that they had around one day cricket. They were so far. I, I know this is about Test cricket, but they were so far ahead of the game when it came to one day cricket when they started and everything else. Uh, and he really you know. Would the West Indies have come together under another captain, right? Like we, that's just, it's a fair question. Uh, you know, we know that they'd had talented teams before. Maybe without Clive Lloyd, they become a really, really good team. Do they become the West Indies that we know? I, you'd have to say no. You'd have to say that that would not have happened without Clive Lloyd. And, um, you know, it, I think for me, I don't know if he was the, you know, if you look at my list, uh, very strong on tacticians right um he, i think clive lloyd is probably slightly le uh further down on the tactician side of things but he literally changed the culture of cricket in his team and in the world um and he, he has to be on any list of uh, i think for that alone yeah i mean for that I, I mean i was looking at the record win record because i obviously haven't followed those live games i've, I've seen fire in babylon and i know what that <laughs> west indian team was but 12 losses and 74 tests is still immense because there were a lot of drawn tests back in the day, right? And there's a reason why that West Indian team was looked upon as invincible. And I can't not believe that Clive Lloyd as captain had nothing to do with that. Of course he did, right? Which is why he was going to be my next pick. But much to your dismay, Jared, neither of my uh, fifth pick is going to be uh, Stephen Fleming or Brendan McCullum. They're, going, they're both going to miss out. So it's it's really unfortunate. And I had a lot of people over I here... I cannot believe the only New Zealander on this list is going to be Kane Williamson, but sorry, continue. <laughs> I mean, Hunter was there, but again, it was a great Hunter? team. So I didn't have what? him. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I'm talking about the win record, but Punter again had a great. I'm not sure Punter would and, pick himself on this list. Yeah, and and I mean, I like how Pat Cummins is pragmatic, but he doesn't make top five for me either. Uh, I did have Andrew Strauss as a rogue pick because of that win in Australia, the Ashes win. But then again, uh, he got destroyed at home as well by South Africa and stuff like that. My they won in India as well, didn't they, Strauss? I, I mean, Strauss oh, yeah. is an interesting captain, to be fair. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean. If I had to, uh, if, if I if I didn't have this one person that I really want to pick right now, I would have gone for Strauss, but I'm going to go Saurav Ganguly. And uh, that is because, you know, similar story to Mizbah, match-fixing scandal. India had won, I think, uh, a solitary test match away from home in the 90s, if I'm not wrong. And Ganguly came in and he had an attacking mindset and he gave, like, opportunities to young guns, brought in a lot of youth in Sehwag, Zaheer, I'm probably, uh, Yuvraj, Mohammad Kaif was around in that time. And you know, he empowered that Indian team to achieve greatness. It felt like India had already, you know, they were aware of how big a powerhouse they could be, but they were still timid. They haven't been activated. And I think Ganguly was the catalyst for all of that, uh, particularly that Australia series. I know there, there were a few injuries in the Australian team, but still, you know, that's a very memorable drawn series for India. And uh, 21 wins in 49 games isn't a terrible record either. I feel like Ganguly sowed the seeds for... Dhoni and then Kohli and without Saurav, maybe India might not have been able to achieve any of that. So, which is why he trumps the likes of Strauss and even Imran and all of the other guys and, and the two New Zealand boys as well. So, so on, on him, I think he's interesting because I don't think, 
I'm trying to have a look tactically. He's re he would be really low on looking at the players that we have on the list so far, right? Mm. So um, from that point of view, but he does change the culture of Indian cricket. Mm. And, and, you know, I think as a fan back in the days, I, I could never get it because I was like, but he's not a very good batter and he's not very good tactically. But, you, you know, I, it's clear that you talk to people of that era, players and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, fans, and he has a big impact. And again, that is part of it. And so captaincy is kind of, a, you know, your win-loss record is really dependent on, on the players that you have, right? Like the best way of doing that would be to look at what the overall odds are beforehand and what percentage chance you had of winning and does your team win above the odds is, is probably the best way of working. Uh, you could do it. And cricket's maybe not sophisticated enough to be able to do that at the moment. Um, yeah. But, you know, so if you take that part out, all you're really left with is tactics and man management. Tactically, I don't think he was a particularly you know, inspiring captain. Uh, he did some cool things, but I don't think he was, you know, on the list of some of these other guys. But I do think man management is something that is maybe undersold with him. And partly because he was a bit of a weird dude and the stories about him, you know, not always wanting to travel with him. But he was, I think he was very good at going, this person is talented and I'm going to give them confidence to go and do the thing that they're going to do. You know, there's, uh, I think he certainly had elements of that within his game. Um, you know, obviously there's, 17 um new zealanders who should have been on the list before him but i get i get why you would have him here um I, it's i you know i can't i can't argue with that let's do some honorary mentions then do you want me to go through all my new zealand captains because you keep saying mccullum and fleming uh, so i would have mccullum fleming coney um and also walter hadley so walter, walter hadley Had yeah richard hadley's father um was was uh you know the stories about him are just absolutely incredible and he did it with literally like we could have played for new zealand in that era it was <laughs> such a you know they were really struggling and walter hadley did some incredible things with them he, he went to it, it this is a bit similar to the arjuna story he went to england for a test series and england only gave them three day tests right mm. and so walter hadley said fuck them we're just going to draw everything we are going to ruin their summer by not going out in a single, and they did. And halfway through that series, England offered to make the final tests four or five days, right? And New Zealand were like, actually, we've got some games booked in, um, <laughs> some tour games, so we're not gonna we're not gonna be able to do that, which is even more hilarious. So his plan worked even better than he did. But the the 49ers, but that whole era of of New Zealand cricket, like it is built on the back of Walter Hadley sort of bringing this side together. Um, so he was incredible. Jeremy Coney is kind of what maybe one of the first sort of you know, uh, avant-garde captains and the way he thought about the game. And, you know, I've spent a lot of time with, with, with Coney. He, like, he's nuts. Like I say that he's a very good friend, but he's absolutely nuts. Um, <laughs> Martin Crow is another one that you could have very high up on this. That's what I'm saying. You could go through, I, I would have had Susie Bates on this list as well. If she'd actually <laughs> captained a single game, because she is our next level. Um, and, and Fleming and, and McCullum. So I've got, I had all of them. There was a man who wrote a book called the art of captaincy, who we don't have on this list, by the way, Mike Brearley. Mm. Do either of you know what Mike Brearley's test batting average was? Isn't Mike Brearley the guy who copped a lot of balls on the body? Well, he copped everything because he couldn't bat. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, Mike Brearley captained England 39 times and had a batting average of 23. Wow. Now, there's a great st story of Mike Brearley that I really, really like where he was going up against Alan Lamb and Alan Lamb, uh, it was, he wanted him to co cover drive through the offside. So he took the helmets that they had out there for the fielders and put them at cover to try and get Alan Lamb to try and hit the ball and get the five run penalty so he could get him playing that shot. Like that's next level genius. Mm -hmm. So I feel bad that he's not on this list. And I think of the other ones that um, that probably might be on some of your lists. I think Mark Taylor is one of the best tacticians I've ever seen. And Australian cricket isn't really a tactical led um, game that you know we we play cricket our way, which is you know we just go bang it in and and you know uh, and put you know put some slips in and yell at you a lot. Mark Taylor was really different than that. He was he was quite cerebral the way that he thought about things. He was much more like a maybe an English or a New Zealand captain in in, in the way that he thought about the game. Um, so I think he probably uh, deserves a mention as well. But I think that's the majority of my list. Yeah, uh, for me, Strauss and Imran are the two names Imran. that are Imran's a good up. one. Yeah. Yeah, that, that really feel like they need to be on this list. But oh, well, it's just 15 guys. And uh, yeah, I mean, sure, uh, maybe I could have gone for Strauss ahead of Kane now that I think about it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think Strauss is a good captain. I, I don't know if I think I would have him above Kane. Um, mm -hmm. You know, he again, it, uh, he was captain when they went to number one in the world, right? So you could make a very similar argument for Strauss that you do for Misbah, but Misbah had to overcome 
like yeah. the match fixing scandal mm -hmm. and and mm -hmm. the unprofessionalism in cricket, where Strauss was coming in when it was very professional, yeah. um, and and still got whacked a little bit by by the odd team that probably losing to South Africa. Um, yeah, uh, he was captain then, wasn't he? When Hashan Amla made all the runs, mm -hmm. Am I, and then he that? retired after that. I think he just left cricket. Yeah, so I. I mean, it's unfortunate, but that probably plays a part with him. Estelle, do you have anyone else that you didn't get to? Yeah, I was. I had uh, Clive Lloyd and uh, Imran Khan as well, but of course, I went mm. for more interesting things. <laughs> yeah, like Mahela. <laughs> That's not the interesting yeah, one. Mahela is not a bad one. Mahela, yeah. I'm okay. I mean, having him ahead of Imran Khan does sound a little bit silly now you've said it out loud. But <laughs> being that you have Hansi Cronier ahead of Imran Khan is is mm. maybe is maybe worse. Um, all right, let's go through the list. Uh, who yeah. went first? Today? It was you, Bayram, was it? That went no, first? Estelle. Estelle went, Estelle first. went first. Yeah. Estelle went first with Steve Waugh. <laughs> Sorry, I'll say it properly. Estelle went first with Steve Waugh, Virat Kohli, Michael Vaughan, Mahela J. Wardner, um, and Hansi Cronier. And... If you what's um Estelle's Twitter handle just so that everyone can abuse her directly for this list <laughs> at uh, Estelle underscore Vasude number one number one mm. uh, uh, Bayram Wed Graham Smith Misbah Al Haq Ben Stokes Kane Williamson and Saraf Ganguly uh, and I have gone Douglas Jardine Arjuna Ranatunga Warwick Armstrong Emma Stoney and Clive Lloyd. It, I think this one will depend on whether because some people just like good teams. Mm. Um. And other people like different styles of captaincy. So I, I think this is a really, really interesting one. Uh, and it will be fascinating to see who, uh, who gets... Um, are, are we keeping stats on um, who's been winning these? No, we should be running polls on these. Yeah. You know, there should be definitive <laughs> records of who is winning these Crick Picks episodes. We, we, might, we might have to do that one day. Um, but yeah, look, it's it's a, I, I find this... I hated this one, if we're being honest, because... <laughs> It, I hate people going on and on about captaincy because generally what they're saying is, oh, he put an extra slip in. Um, or he, he he gave the ball to Glenn McGrath again, right? Like, yeah, that's what you're supposed to do. <laughs> but I do think that there are some people who have a bigger impact. And, you know, so Brendan McCullum, someone who doesn't make the list, but he changed the shape of New Zealand cricket, right? And, and hmm. you know, some of these people have real um, lasting impacts on, on what their team goes on to do you know in Ms. Burr and Surav Ganguly's case Warwick Armstrong's case you know they, these are people who are really really important and then there's Estelle's list yeah <laughs> and on that note I suppose we'll end this uh, episode of Crick Fix if you liked it do throw us a like and share it with your friends and subscribe to both this channel and Jared's other channel we'll be back next week with another episode of Crick Fix till then that'll be all goodbye a lot of people complain that I'm not a former cricketer and so that I don't really know the game well you know what they can't claim then I don't know desks. I've been using desks for years. I'm a collector of desks, old and new, and I am sitting on a new one right now. I am the Don Bradman of sitting at desks. So when I tell you that the E7 Pro next generation height adjustable desk from FlexiSpot is legit, this is like Michael Jordan talking to you about sneakers. This desk holds 160 kilograms. It is as stable as anything I've ever seen, and it has under desk cable management. But really, the main skill here is that this desk rises and falls at the push of a button and it moves super quick. And it has so many settings that remember your favorite heights. It really does it all. And I could not recommend the E7 Pro from FlexiSpot anymore. Even though I am currently sitting on one of FlexiSpot's BS12 Pro multifunctional adjustable upgraded fabric ergonomic chairs. My butt and computer have never been happier than when using one of FlexiSpot's products. So get over to their page right now for big savings.